Hey guys, welcome to my CPU architecture series. Um, previously I had about six episodes of a previous series where I tried to teach about as much as I knew about CPU architecture and that was about a year ago. Unfortunately I stopped because I got busy and other stuff and um, you know I still get subs for that even today and I still get people commenting that they want more and I know it's not, I don't have a lot of people asking for it but basically I want to keep doing it, I want to keep teaching you guys, I want to teach you guys what I know, and you know, I want to do it right this time. Before, I had a piece of paper, I I didn't know as much as I know now, I mean, it's not that a lot of stuff I said before was wrong, it's that some of it was admittedly not quite right, or some of it was just plain wrong, but uh, again, as a general understanding I gave before, wasn't bad, but again, to get down to it, it's going to restart. We're gonna do it better this time. Got a whiteboard. Clearly, I'm not making the greatest space of it. I try. I did this, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to run out of space, at which I still have a third of. But uh, yeah, and you have me on camera, so get a very handsome face to look at while you're learning. But uh, I'm kidding. But <laughs> but uh, yeah. So we're gonna restart, and got a little list of things we're gonna be doing this episode. So again, these videos, as before, have been about 10 minutes around that area, and it's we this. These videos might be even a little bit longer. It's going to go into explaining things a little bit better. I'm going to try to really flesh out these concepts and really make sure they're cemented. Because I don't want to, you know, be on episode 11 and then someone's still like, I don't want to understand something on episode, like, 2. Because if you miss a foundational piece, it's not good. So, yeah. Restarting the series. Firstly, or well, second, secondarily, because this list here. Uh, disclaimer. I am a college student. I don't no for sure 100% every single thing about super architecture I don't I, I barely I mean once you start learning about this stuff it's like wow I don't know shit <laughs> and but I can confidently say you know more than the average person about CPU architecture and about CPUs in general I'm going to give you that information in the best way I can and explain it the concepts and the info and the data in the best way I can but um you know you're going to learn something from this if you don't know much about it already. But, uh, you know, just a cleaner, I do mis make mistakes. I'm human. If I make a mistake, point it out. I'll try to fix it. Otherwise, you know, don't take what I say as Bible. You can probably have some faith in it. And some stuff, like foundational stuff, is like really like, yeah, that's obviously how it is. But, um, you know, I, I don't work for Intel or, you know, AMD or whatever. Also, as a side note, the previous series was really just about AMD and Intel processors, and that was all fine and such, but I'm going to take the series in a little bit of a different, uh, wider scope this time, and it's going to be about AMD CPUs, Intel CPUs, uh, Qualcomm, Samsung, Apple, MediaTek, Rockchip, I can name them all day, <laughs> NVIDIA, uh, you know, there's a lot of CPUs out there and a lot of design firms, and um, I'm really looking to expand because a year ago, in the span of a year, the focus, or at least the impact that the mobile market has had, is tremendous. I mean, before it was tremendous, but now it's like tremendous times two, and I'm sure next year it'll be even bigger. It's There's so many new innovative CPU companies coming out that it's you have to cover them. Anyways, this is going to be a long video because it's already like near four minutes, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so... Let's get to the meat of it. Let's stop babbling on the series, you know, stop with this claim, start, stop with saying, okay, we're going to start to do it right. Let's get to it. Firstly, this is a CPU about CPU architecture, or it's going to be a series about CPU architecture. You're going to learn about CPU architecture. Therefore, it'd probably be best to learn what the hell that is. If you don't know much, you might have gone on, you know, some websites like The Verge or, well, not The Verge, maybe like an Antec or something, and you might have seen the words, you know, like, CPU architecture thrown around, and you might be like, what is that? I'm going to look up on that. It seems to be pretty important. It, it pretty is. It, it, or it is quite important. Um, CPU architecture is the design, the analysis, the structure of the system of what a CPU is. It's very, it's, it's, it's a hard concept to grasp if you don't already know what it is. It's kind of like, a, it's a catch-22. If you don't know what it is, good luck, but if you got it, you got it. So, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. The way I liken it to is like an engine. We all know what an engine, or at least most of us know what an engine is. And it's in our cars, and our motorcycles, you know, we got them everywhere. And, you know, we may know what a V8 is, and we may know what an I4 is, and what the difference is, but we all know engines are made to 
for one purpose, to solve various problems, but they're all the same solution. And it's the same thing with CPUs. CPU from CPU, like CPU architecture to CPU architecture can be vastly different, but they all try to meet the same goal. Take instructions, execute them, give result. All of them have that goal. Or at least like 99.99999999% I mean, I, I, there could be exceptions, but I really doubt it. <laughs> um, obviously, from one engine to the next, you could have vast differences. You know, you could make assumptions, but even those assumptions could be wrong between, like, one V8 could be completely different from another V8, which could be completely different from another V8. It, it's the system. An engine is uh, several systems wrapped into one system to complete a task. A CPU core is several systems wrapped into one system to complete a task. And that's what CPU architecture is. It's how all the systems are, the quantity of the systems, the quality of the systems, how those systems individually work, how they work together, what they do, etc., etc. So there's our definition of CPU architecture. And now that we have basically like you know the scene set, let's get down to it. The machine cycle. The most foundational thing about a CPU is the steps it goes through to finish its work, or at least to do its work. I guess finish would be the last step. The machine cycle. Many people know this cycle already. It's not as very well kept secret, it's not a secret at all really, it's nothing nothing of a secret. It's it's a cycle that, we, that CPUs and machines in general go through to do their tasks. And the machine cycle traditionally is taught in four steps, sometimes five, very rarely in three, it really depends on like what textbook you're reading, what teacher is teaching you, but normally in four steps. You have uh, fetch, decode, execute, and store. Sometimes you will have, um, you know, the th you may have the last step cut off, or you may have an extra step appended. I, I can't remember the fifth, the fifth one what it was, uh, unfortunately. But again, there's four steps, and that's really all I need to know. It's gonna be a long video. I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, I really want to get through a lot so I can get to the good stuff. <laughs> in all these uh, machine cycle things, in all of these. Uh, in all these steps, you have several different systems within these steps to perform them. Now, I'm going to use an analogy. There's going to be a lot of analogies in the series, mind you, just to bring unfamiliar concepts or information to more familiar ways of thinking about them. So, for the machine cycle, you got four steps. You got fetch, decode, execute, and store. I already said that. But let's liken it to something we're all familiar with. Uh, these two boxes, pictures here, if you can't see them full screen, and if you still can't see them, let me know. I'll draw them bigger not for this video, but tough. <laughs> you have four steps, and I don't know if you can see a little one. There's a one, there's a two, there's a three, there's a four, and on, on this side there's also one, two, three, and four. I'm trying to like reflect in the video how I'm moving backwards is I'm really not used to it. Um, on this side we have the CPU, and with the fetch, let's say you're issuing a very basic instruction. X plus Y equals N. I'm sorry if that's hard to write. Even I am having a hard time reading it, but I really thought I was going to have space troubles, and obviously I didn't. Um, first step x plus y equals n, and there's an arrow joining the CPU. The CPU is going out, or really, it's getting the instruction, but in real terms, it's going out to get the instruction. It's going to fetch the instruction or what it has to do. And let's say there's an analogy. Let's say you're a student, and there's a teacher, and the teacher's going to give you an assignment. And she says, or he says, or I don't know, maybe you have an alien teacher, there's an assignment on my desk, come up and get it. So you, 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 there's the assignment, this little paper, and you go get it. It comes to you, or whatever. That's fetch. Fetch. You get the instruction. Next one is decode. Now this sounds a little cryptic, and it's actually pretty simple conceptually, but it's, uh, it's a hard loop to get over. What does decode mean? It means breaking the instruction down into a way that you can use it. Now your instruction, or sorry, yeah, the assignment you get as a student may be, draw me a picture of a boat. I want a picture of a boat. Candidate tomorrow. You may see that and say, easy, I understand what these words mean. But in your head, you'll actually be breaking these down a little bit more. You know, the first one, I'm going to go to the art store. Uh, and then I'm going to go home. And then, you know, after school, go to the art store, go home, look up pictures of boats maybe. I want to copy one off the internet or whatever. I'll plagiarism. It's inspiration, kids. Um, paint the picture and then get ready to hand it tomorrow. CPU will do the same thing. It'll have X plus Y equals N. It'll say, okay, I need to go find X, I need to go find Y, and then execute them, and then store it. 
right? Right. Let's decode. Decode is kind of taking the overall assignment, or the overall instruction, that uh, here's what I want you to do, and then breaking it down into simpler steps in your own head or in your own language that you can understand to do. Third step, execute. Um, I didn't know how to depict a CPU executing, so I just drew a CPU with legs and arms writing on a table. But you get the idea. It's basically doing it. It's like you drawing the picture of the boat. You, you get the idea. You are doing it. You're going to the art store. You're drawing the picture. You're looking on the internet. Blah, blah, blah. You're, you're doing it. You're doing the work. Okay? Okay. Fourth step. CPU gives you the result. Simple, right? CPU stores the result in a format you can understand, in a result you can understand, in a place you can access it. And the analogy would be you going to the teacher saying, here, boat, picture of the boat, it's yours now. Got it. Sorry, flew out of my hand. Um, so we all understand. Fetch, get the instruction. Decode, you take the raw, raw instruction that you may or may not understand, and you break it up into simpler steps and how you would do it individual individual steps or as they'd be called operations as to how you would do this and then you do it and then you get the result back got it got it very simple that's the machine cycle fetch the code execute store and i had to break it down like that because some of these steps aren't obvious decode sounds like when you hear decode you're like 